Good morning, April 11th, 2024. And today we're going to talk about using the assessment tracker in SPEDFORMS 2.0. We're going to remind you that you should never attempt to log in twice using two browser windows or two different devices. And here are the magic crucial words at the same time. You can absolutely use more than one browser just not at the same time. You can use different devices. You can use your school laptop and at home your desktop or your iPhone when you're out in a family visit or an iPad. Just you can't be logged in to those, play, to those devices at the same time. And so make sure that at the end of your, each, each work session, when you are signing out, use that under 2.0 that upper left hand upper right hand corner person and click the sign out button that's when you do truly sign out if you just click out of there you're not signed out and so you're still using up your allotted time right but also you are preventing somebody else from working so this is just an important note regarding sped forms so why would you want to use your assessment tracker? I would go with why do you not want to use the assessment tracker? Um, when it's implemented in your district by all of the assigned evaluators or the assessors, then that assessment tracker will communicate evaluation timelines to all the team members. It will help the team members meet those timelines because they can all see them. It will communicate a completion of the task to the plan managers and the administrators. So when you're finished with your task, you'll be able to list that and everybody will know. And it also helps those team members that are responsible for multiple evaluations to prioritize which tasks across students they need to do first, second, third. And so just a really super helpful tool. So what does it take to make our assessment tracker work? Well, it needs a, com a program-wide commitment. Everybody needs to be using it that are going to be doing any evaluations or assessments. The teachers, the OT, the PT, the SLP, the school psych, the DAPE, the nurse, everybody needs to be using it that is doing any kind of assessment or evaluation. We also, number two, need the assignment of the provider for each evaluation tool or procedure on the prior written notice. So we put somebody's name there. It doesn't print, nobody needs to worry about that, but in order for it to be assigned to the right person in the assessment tracker, the name needs to come up. You need to choose the school psych that's gonna do this assessment, or you need to choose the OT or the speech clinician that's going to do that particular assessment. You also, number three, need the evaluation due date is put in by either the plan manager or the administrator or the person in charge of assessments, if you have an assessment team. So we need to put in the due date and the district has to decide what does that due date mean? It's probably not the very date you're having a meeting with a parent, it's probably, right, it's gonna be days before that, but you all get to determine the due date for each different assessment. And finally, we need the documentation of completion by each provider based on our determination of what does complete mean. Does complete mean I finished the task, but I haven't yet written the report? Or com does complete mean I've finished the assessment and I've written the report and I've put it in the evaluation report? The district has to decide those things and everybody needs to use that same process. So. So what is the assessment tracker? The assessment tracker is a two-part tool, right? The first part, when you go into a, if you choose a student from your dashboard and you go down to assessment tracker, this is where a plan manager or an administrator can view, assign, and set the due date for that student's evaluation materials and procedures once of course they've got the consent right or the 14 days is lapsed if it's a reavow. part one is found in the referral and evaluation forms folder of, of the sped forms 2.0 menu 
The second part you find along the outside edge or the under the hamburger menu, and that's where you access all the assessments assigned to you as an individual. So I'm the OT, what assessments have been signed, assigned to me? I'm the PT, what assessments have been so assigned to me? I'm the school site. So you can click under that hamburger menu all the way down, educator assessments. Now, if you're somebody that only works on a, an assessment team, or maybe you're the school psych and you're only doing assessments, you can select as your default landing page, you know, the page when you open up SPED forms that you go to every time, you can make that choice under the educator setup. You can, you can have the assessment page be your default assessment, default landing page be the assessment page, if that's something that you want. If you're a teacher and you want to see your caseload, and the students that you serve, then that's going to be, you're going to choose a SPED dashboard. Or if you're the MA person, you're going to choose that MA dashboard. But it's one of those um, efficiency pieces that we build into SPED forms. So let's take this assessment tracker step by step. So the student specific thing. So you go to that evaluation, reevaluation plan, prior written notice. And this is for both Part B or Part C. And you add those assessment pieces in there, right? But remember we said you need to put in the person's name, the individual that's going to do this assessment. In this case, it's the ABC test. Um, I'm a special ed teacher and I'm going to do, and here's my name. So you've got to make sure that we have providers listed because this is the place where it's going to tell the assessment tracker where what kids you need to assess and put it that assessment on your assessment list. So once it's finalized, then tools and procedures then appear in the student's assessment tracker. So you go ahead and you do all of this, making sure you're adding the provider and then um, save and finalize. So when you're doing this, then you are going to be able to see this list of actions. Here's what's the area, what's the assessment, who's the evaluator. You don't see my name here, right? But we, but so what you see is what you've always seen, but that name still has to exist in the background. All right, then when we go to Richard Castle's assessment tracker, right? Remember, this is in that uh, file folder for evaluations and reevaluations. You go in there, and then the either the case manager, excuse me, the plan manager, or an administrator that's in charge of this can go in and add the due date. Here's where you're going to need to think about what's your district policy for the due date. When do you want all of this done? Do you want it done a week before the meeting is going to be scheduled? Do you want it done two weeks before the evaluation is actually due? You get to decide that and you're going to add the due date in here. And then, of course, you're going to hit that save button. So then the next part is those individual providers that are going to do the assessment. So the educator assessment component of the assessment tracker requires that each provider assigned to the evaluation assessment tool or procedure document the date in their asset when their assessment has been completed so we're going to show you a, a, a slide where you see the list of tests that you have to do and then you there is a place where you can tell it's completed now what does completed mean just like deciding that earlier date does completed mean that the assignment tool and procedure has been administrator administered or does it mean that it's been administered and interpreted and the document in the evaluation report has been added or the, the, the report has been added to the Part B or Part C evaluation summary section as appropriate? So your district needs to decide how are we going to do this and what does it mean when I say I'm done? So here's what that list would look like. So I go down all the way to the bottom and I find my assessment tracker. And then I can see in here the names of the kids that I have assessments that I need to do. 
Once that due date is added, the materials and procedures appear here. Green means I'm done. Red means I've still got work to do. All right? So if I want to see, uh, Lou Lightly, I still have work to do here. I'm going to open this Chevron, and I can see what do I have to do. I have in the background area, I'm going to do the records, uh, a review of records, and a reason for the parent interview and the developmental history. This is what I'm going to work on. And so uh, the due date is here. When I finish it, according to the due date definition that we've used, I put this due, the date that I completed it in here, and I hit that save button. So this is assessments only assigned to me, to the educator, to the OT, to the PT. These are the assessments that have been assigned to me and you'll see those due dates and so you can sort by due date if you'd like so that you can have the the most uh, the earliest due date at the top or the earliest due date at the bottom up to you or you can sort by school or grade you'll also find links to navigate to the these different um, tools after you've completed this let's say you go ahead and you're working in the evaluation report, any of these areas, that's a, it's a quick link to get there. Once that educator has entered and saved the date right here, the student will turn green for that educator and you're done. Now, that doesn't mean the whole kit is done. That doesn't mean that the OT is done, the PT is done. It just means that your portion of this assessment process for that student is done. Plan managers or administrators then, or people that are in charge of the assessment team can follow completion of the evaluation tools and procedures using the status field in the assessment tracker. So you can go to um, SPED forms, quick reports, and then type in assessment tracker, active special ed, or assessment tracking includes inactive and non-special ed kids. So you can go ahead and if you want to save this, you know that you just use the little star and it will always then be at the top of your list. You also know that if you click the little um, conversation icon here, it gives you a, a description of what's in that particular report. So the assessment tracking, this first one, lists all the assessments assigned to any of the providers in that district or building the date that it's assigned, it's the date that it's due, and the date that it's completed. This report is also available in the Educator Quick Reports using the same name, but of course, that educator would only see um, that report for students that they are assigned to. So the green check here indicates completion. So if I want to go look, I can go to Richard Castle. I'm in Richard Castle's assessment tracker. I can see all of the assessments and I can see which ones are done and which ones are not yet done. So educator assessments show educators only the items that have been assigned to them. The assessment tracking quick report displays completion status of all of the assessments for the students that they have access to even if they are not the plan manager. But if they have edit access to the student or they have access to the student, they will be able to see that. Again, you're going to go in the left-hand hamburger menu column and you're going to go to educator assessments. Finally, oops, our star moved here. Click on the star to save the report, like I said earlier, at the top of your quick report list. Again, also for admin. There are, there's assessment tracking, assessment tracking, including inactive and non, non special ed students. And if you go to that report, then you get a document that looks like this. And of course you can download that into an Excel spreadsheet or into a Google Sheets. If you want to slice and dice, you can sort as you can with all of our reports in the same manner. So that's it for how the steps really using the assessment tracker is super easy as long as you have definitions of due date and completion 
And as long as everybody in the system is using it, we're going to stop recording now. Okay.